Hello, this is Phil from Undercage.com. Today we got Xperia Z2, the successor for the Sony's flagship lineup, starting with Xperia Z and the Xperia Z1. So it's got bigger and uh, it's got a bigger screen, it's got a better processor. All the nice thing is inside, let's take a look at it. To start with, it's got a stereo speaker on the front, uh, Sony logo, front-facing camera with the larger 5.2 uh, inches of a full HD display. No keys on the bottom. All the keys are built in the screen with the soft key. On the right is a power key with the volume rocker, a micro SD card slot, expandable up to 28 gigabytes, and a dedicated camera shutter key. That's always a good thing. Takes it a whole lot more easier to take photos. On the top is a noise canceling microphone with the mic uh, headphone jack. And on the left is a micro SIM card slot with the micro USB port. Uh, there's a waterproof ceiling covered on the, on the cover port. Uh, you might want to not open it not so often as you want because um, it could undermine the waterproof functionality of the phone. There's a docking port so you can um, put it in the dock or you can connect it with the magnetic cable. Uh, it's compatible with the Z Ultra, Z1 Compact and the Z1's magnetic cable so you might want to use that. Uh, and there's a strap hole right there so you can put on your strap on your phone. There's a microphone on the bottom. That's pretty much it. On the back is a 20.7 megapixel of a Sony camera with the LED flash NFC goes right here. Sony logo, Xperia logo, then so on and so forth. The purple, it comes in three colors, white, black, and purple. I'm not exactly a big fan of the curl color purple, but Sony actually does their job. Uh, Sony is known for its uh, amazing purple color, starting with the Sony Vaio. Uh, I, I was really amazed. I was more like mesmerized to see Sony 505 at the, its initial launch, like 1997. And it still is, does an amazing job at making their thing is purple. It's really amazing how they do it. Even the people like me who don't exactly like the purple and a lot of other uh, things is like it. Uh, the, lo uh, the lock screen of the Xperia is always the same, except for the fact that they used to have a uh, camera slider right there. They actually moved it onto the bottom on their KitKat firmware, so you can do that, or you can swipe to unlock the screen. I actually like the uh, previous, uh, previous the, the blind kind of effect. They, they, uh, they removed it, I don't know why, but um, Sony laundry is always the same. There's nothing special. You can... Um, Swipe through the apps, or you can change the order from alphabetical to um, most used, installed on order, so on and so forth. And um, the most noticeable part of the kit firmware of the Sony is that um, they used to have a toggle on the top. Now they made it a two-sided toggle, like the um, stock Android does. So you can either swipe down uh, uh, from the top to get to the notification part, or you can swipe your two fingers to get into the quick settings part, or you can tap and hold on the right half of the screen and swipe down to access to that screen. And the um, the biggest difference that I've found so far is that there's uh, now a status bar icon so you can remove, so you can choose whether to remove or to show uh, the icons on the top. This, these are usually found in the custom realms and Sony has adopted it. That's a, that's a very good thing. I use the, um, the battery bot to display percentage over there. So I might not want to have a battery icon there at all. So I can just remove that. Or you don't want to use an extra resource to display that. Just want to use phones so you can display a uh, battery percentage. Or you want to kill the time over there the clock over there, Wi-Fi location, so you can remove everything except for the, um, the signal bar right there if you would uh, want to decide in that way. And um, you can manage notifications. Starting with the Android Jelly Beans, you could have tapped and hold on the notification icon to kill the notification. Sony has made it into a, into a former thing. Now they have it on the settings. And um, there's a little neat thingy called Emotion, so you can uh, pick up your phone to answer your call without touching on the phone. So on and so forth, those kind of, you know, uh, interesting uh, functions. But these are not exactly the main concerns. The most interesting part that I found is that it's got a thing called a smart backlight control. It started with the Xperia Z2 tablet and the Z2 has it, of course. So as long as you're holding your phone on your phone, uh, on your hand, your screen is never gonna turn off. That's uh, whether you set it into 10 seconds or 15 seconds on your screen out time. So that's a, that seems like a very useful feature. Along with that, uh, LG has revived it, uh, calling it a knock-on. Nokia started it, but LG has named it knock-on and it seems like everybody's gonna um, 
call it a knock on or tap to tap to wake. So you can double tap on the screen to wake up the phone. You, there, there's no way that you can um, turn off the phone without touching on the button, but um, you can wake it up. So you can tap twice to wake it up. And all this goodies still are here, glove mode and the uh, white balance. If you don't like, if you think your screen is like too bluish or reddish, you can change the car color theme of the screen as you wish. So that's the basics of the display part. And the display itself has got a lot improved. It's uh, compared to the Xperia Z, it was the same with the Xperia Z1 as well. So um, we got our home page right here and we have it on the Z2 as well. Give it a second and this, this icon right here and the colors right here look uh, almost identical and looked at the right angle but um, giving it few, uh, some angle changes. You can see that all the colors are washed out in the Xperia Z and it was the same case in the Z1 as well but the Xperia Z2 has almost perfect viewing angle uh, whichever angle you look at. Uh, the camera isn't exactly catching it really well but the display on the Z2 is quite amazing. Well, well, it was true that the, the display on the Xperia Z or the Z1 had a terrible viewing angle, but the Z2's display uh, standing by itself is terrific. So that's the display part. And um, let's get a sound. Uh, Sony is known for its sound and camera and also for failing to put that on their phones, but it's, everything got changed in the Z1 and the Z2 is no exception. It's got a it's got an awesome Sony sound effect, started with the dynamic normalizer. That's a pretty uh, pretty normal function. It's got a clear bass. So Sony's um, CD players or the MP3 player fans know how clear bass really uh, makes your music a lot more interesting. And not only that, it's got a, um, it's got a USB DAC support so you can connect it. Sony has this uh, bulky USB DAC so you can connect that to the phone. If you're really an audiophile, you can do that to enhance your sound quality. And um, that's not the most important part. The important part is that it supports noise cancelling. Yes, that's the noise cancelling that your MP3 player used to have. And um, it comes with the noise cancelling headset, so you can connect that. And the microphone on the noise cancelling headset uh, analyzes the signal or the sound surrounding, uh, surrounding your environment. So if there's a sound wave like this, it recognize it and kills the sound wave with the opposite wave. So it kills the noise around you. And it really works like a charm if you're in a train or if you're on a bus when there's like a static noise all the time. It really does its job and it's finally in the phone and it's totally amazing. And um, there's um, another sound effect called the um, S4 front surround that sounds really amazing on the front sound speaker, but it's not exactly. Uh, Sony has been really proud of their enhancement on the front facing speakers and they're not exactly um, that much amazing. Uh, not even compared to the HTC One. HTC uh, is known for their boom sound for their amazing speakers but not only for that um, compar even compared to the other phones in the market the speaker over at the Xperia Z2 is nowhere near amazing and uh, Sony's own sound effects towards the, towards the front facing speakers just doesn't do its job. That's totally disappointing but don't Exactly, that's the point is the sound coming through that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is totally, totally amazing. So that's the sound. And um, let's jump a little to the Nova launcher. I'm not exactly a big fan of the um, Sony launcher. So let's jump a little. The spec wise, it's got a, it's got a latest processor in the market. It's got a Snapdragon 801 running at 2.27 gigahertz and the graphics with Adreno 330. And it's got a three gigabytes of RAM. I don't know why, but HTC and Samsung decided not to include three gigs, but only two gigs on their latest mainstream smartphone. But Sony wasn't doing that. Sony put all the nice three gigabytes on the Sony smart, uh, Xperia Z2 so you can enjoy your full uh, that uh, much of the RAM on your phone. So that Snapdragon running with the N22 benchmark scores about 33,000 scores. That's almost 34,000. And uh, I know benchmark is not everything, but um, it ranks right below the Galaxy Note 3. And it actually runs faster than the Galaxy Note 3 in my opinion. So whichever, whichever job you do on your phone is gonna run flawlessly, whether you're gonna surf on a net or whether you're gonna multitask through the apps or you wanna launch the Walkman app or if you wanna launch a camera, whichever, it will run with flawlessly without a lag. 
So that was the performance. And the camera wise, it's got a dedicated shutter, which is the best part of the camera. And turning the camera on gives you the nice cyber shot too. And the camera quality is quite amazing. Sony wasn't exactly doing a good job in camera, but starting with the Z1's firmware update and the, and the Z2 is quite amazing. The camera is amazing. And another amazing part is the battery. It comes with the, it packs 3200 milliamps battery inside. And the normal usage for me, uh, most of the phones don't exactly last a day. And the Xperia Z1 was amazing to last about a three to 5% uh, when I got home back. And the, so, uh, the Galaxy S5 lasts about a 19%, which was very amazing. And Xperia Z2 does the similar job. Its battery life is amazing. So if everything on the Z2 is amazing, what, what is a disappointing part? To be honest, it took me a while to, um, for me to find it. And there's one thing, the build quality. The Z1's build quality was very amazing. It was like a piece of art. But, but the Z2, there's a call. But the Z2, there's a little gap between the metal frame and the glass. And there's, there's a little bit of difference between the parts meeting the glass and the, the metal part. The official uh, question towards the Sony get, uh, got us the answer that the, um, it's not gonna undermine the waterproof functionality, but we're not sure of that. And it sure doesn't feel as nice as the Z1 did. That's one thing. And another thing is that the Z2 is a bit tall considering its uh, screen size. It's almost as tall as the Galaxy Note 3, which has a larger screen, but that's just a personal uh, personal choice. I like the uh, the omnibalance design of Sony language, but so I don't really care. But having a tall uh, profile compared to the screen is definitely not exactly a good thing. So except for these things, Xperia Z2 is almost the best Android smartphone in the market for right now. I think it's incomparable to the Galaxy S5 or the HTC One. The Xperia Z2 is, is it's gonna be really hard to disappoint you. Uh, whichever you're looking for, Xperia Z2 is there to do its job. That was Xperia Z2. Please don't forget to tap on there to subscribe to our channel and we'll see you guys back later with the more of an interesting reviews coming follow right after. Thank you always for watching, bye.